Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to my channel. I pray that you are all in the best of health and iman. If you are new, welcome. My name is Nafisa. I am a Muslim life coach and I support Muslim women with relationship and mental health issues. So if you're interested in being coached in those areas, you can find me over on my website, which I will leave linked in the description box down below. But over here on YouTube, I make Islamic lifestyle as well as Dawa content. So if you're interested in that, definitely make sure you subscribe. You can also find me on Patreon where I coach women on femininity, how to be more feminine, how to be more soft. I also coach women on how to prepare for marriage and also helping women who are married to maintain happier marriages. So if you're interested in all of that, definitely make sure you check me out on Patreon. In today's video, we are talking about the pros and cons of marrying a high earning man. What are some of the things to consider? I think this video is important for my young women who are looking to go into marriages and relationships because these days the term high value is used a lot and is often synonymous with high earning men, men who earn a good amount of money. And yes, women do value for men to be able to lead their homes and provide and protect their wives. So yes, money is important. Let's admit it in a relationship, right? But I want you ladies to think carefully, not to over prioritize money beyond where it needs to be. We need to have all things considered when we are choosing men who make more money so that we don't later on regret it. This video is about some of the things a lot of people who are telling you marry rich are not telling you to consider. So please watch this video carefully. We're going to begin with the cons and end on a positive note with the pros. One of the cons of marrying a man who is high earning is that he may not have as much time for you as you may like. Us women value quality time. But if you marry a high earning man who either has a job that he's greatly committed to, then that commitment may also mean time commitment. Oftentimes I find women who are married to men who are high earning then complain about how he has no time for you. If he's running a business and his business is doing extremely well, six, seven, eight, nine figures, girl, it takes a lot to build a business like that. It takes a lot of his effort. It takes a lot of his time. So he might just not have as much time for you as you want. So you have to think about who you are as a woman. Are you a woman that values a lot of quality time with your partner? If so, then maybe think carefully about the man that you choose. Not saying you should choose a jobless man and one who just sits home who's a bum, just sits home watching TV, eating all your food all day. But I'm just saying you might want to think carefully about how much of a time commitment he's putting towards his job because the more he does towards his jobs and earning the money the less he has to put towards you so that is one of the cons of marrying a man who is um, high earning because you just may not have as much time to spend with him not only you but if you have children you notice that he may not be able to be there to come watch the football game to come watch you know your kids when they get a certificate at school for whatever because he, he's not around for that. It's actually interesting that I say that because I also think similar thing goes for like marrying imams and just people in high positions regular usually, right? They have a lot of other commitments. And so it takes a lot of patience to marry somebody like that if you value quality time. So that can be a con of marrying a high earning man. The next reality that a lot of young women don't consider is it's unlikely that you will meet a man in, in his 20s who is high earning unless he's one of the very few who maybe created an app or something and just suddenly blew up. Otherwise, it's unlikely that this high earning man that you're looking for is going to be a man in his 20s because most men in their 20s is kind of like most women in their 20s. They probably just graduated uni. They're probably looking to stabilize themselves in a job. They're just starting to gain experience in whatever career field they're working in or whatever business. Their business is usually at a startup level. They're just gaining leverage in that stage of life. So the higher earning men, I find, tend to be the men who are in their 30s and plus. Now, if you are a woman in your early 20s then, 
and you you were like no the money very very important to me then you're looking to marry probably a man 28 30 plus he's going to be 5 10 15 20 years older than you some people marry men who are even more than that so sis enjoy it now but have in mind that one day if you're in your 20s now and there's like a 15 years gap between the two of you there will come a stage of your life where he will enter into pension age much faster than you will and what that brings with it the health issues the needing more help he may end up having you know illnesses and needing for somebody to take care of him and you as the young wife are going to have to step in you could see it as a pro because if this man has invested in you he's worked hard for the family maybe he has the money so you know there's access to hospitals and people to take care of him but as a wife there is still a role that you also have to carry out and that is why to some extent i'm against this ideal of just teaching young women that they can just be princesses forever at some stage in life you're gonna have to come out of your princess zone and enter into your queen zone because queens have responsibilities when you have children you become a queen because you can't just be sitting there expecting everybody to do everything for you no more there's a child that is depending on you so you're, you're forced to have to grow up even if you don't want to and that is a reality you can get princess treatments here and there but you can't remain a princess forever and if he enters into pension age much faster than you because of the age gap you will be responsible for looking after him to some extent so i don't want young women thinking we're gonna go marry all these men that are established they have money you know they have status that they, they you know mashallah it's all good and we're just gonna enjoy this forever and there's never gonna be a time where things might switch up where you're going to have to also give in excess there will be time you may not have to give monetarily as in in terms of money you may not have to give back that way but the love the care the chanel handbags the nice things he's been buying for you the nice big house you've been living in that's what you enjoyed you're gonna have to give back some of that care in terms of looking after him in old age being his carer if you need to be his carer in old age making financial decisions that he used to make maybe helping him manage his companies and things like that so you can't be a princess forever is my point with this and it can be your con because sometimes when women enter into that stage they, they are then thinking oh my god so now i have to have all these responsibilities well what did you think was going to happen when you were marrying a man who was 5 10 15 20 years older than you you married him for the stability and the stage of life that he was at and that served you but here's also your turn to serve him back the next con of marrying a man who is high earning is that other women will also be interested in him here's you thinking that oh my gosh he's gonna pick me he's gonna marry me and we're gonna live happily ever after and then you get married you realize either he can't stay away from the women or the women can't stop chasing him what you found attractive in him other women also find it attractive in him so you're not the only one that spotted the gold other women want a share of that and unfortunately a lot of the times high earning men find it difficult to be faithful again those who don't fear a lot and those who don't have good controls over their emotions and their feelings so a lot of the times women who are married to men who have a lot of money find infidelity to be an issue not all men who are high earning cheat to say that would just be absolutely wrong okay there could be really great men out there who are faithful to their spouses and they are still high earning i think it has a lot to do with the fear of god integrity and just personal strength to be able to reject when the temptation comes but the reality is the more money the man has and more people notices it, maybe by the way he dressed, they know about him, they know of him, whatever, they know where he works, all of that. The more of that he has, the more attractive he's going to be to other women as well. And some women will chase men. I've made a video about why a woman should never chase a man. If you haven't seen it, watch that video, please. But 
it's important for women to know that this can be a con of marrying a high earning man and therefore it's very important for women to qualify men based on different things and not just their income level please income may be important but think carefully think carefully don't just be like he earns a lot of money he looks good I'm, I'm good to go he's muslim he says he prays so whether he prays or not don't really care but i'm happy to go about it and you're not looking at character you're not looking at integrity as a person it's very important especially if it's high earning okay because other women want a piece of what you have too and yeah gold diggers they exist they exist so he may struggle to be faithful if he doesn't fear god and have a sense of integrity the next con to marrying a man who is high earning is that other family members from his side may think or see you as a gold digger oftentimes you find when a man marries a woman who's not on the same social economical level as him the rest of the world is just like she's a gold digger she was, she's only with you for your money and unfortunately this is just one of the things people might say but you know personally i make a video about not caring about what other people will say and living your life but you may hear it here and there people saying oh she's only with him for his for his money or some of his family members not liking you because they suspect that you're only with him because of his money which is why it's very important women that you learn to qualify men on more things than money if your biggest focus is qualifying him based on how much he makes yes they're gonna think you're a gold digger they're not just going to think you just want to provide a man who can provide for you because you're not prioritizing anything other than how much he makes. So if you really want a faithful man, a faithful husband, consider other things. Don't just give him a yes just because he earns a lot of money. OK, so yes, maybe you may experience that families saying things about you, friends saying things about you, just people on the outside being like, no, it looks like she's only with him because of the, the money she, he's making or she's only staying because he makes so much money, okay? If that's your reason for staying and getting with a guy, I'm not judging you, but sis, it would be better if you chose someone you can actually build a peaceful life and happy home with. And that, you need good character, you need integrity, you need God-fearing, man to be in a happy relationship with the last con that i want to talk about in this video before we move on to some of the pros that i have is that you may begin to feel useless oftentimes men who are very busy they're high earning they're not home they're not there to create that help you to create that family life family environment so they very much rely on a very feminine woman to stay at home take care of the children create a home you know that homeliness and that home environment most of these men are not the type of men who are looking for women who are also working like you know over time every single day usually they're looking for women who can build a home and create a sense of stability because they know that they don't have that themselves not that they don't allow their women to work, but they may just prefer more feminine women and they may just prefer the woman to be more in her restful mode. And for a lot of women, that may sometimes mean them just not working. And if a woman is not working and her husband is the only one making the money, making such a great impact, a great difference in the world, then sometimes the woman can eventually get to a point where she feels useless. She feels like she's not making any contribution in the world. She feels like she's not doing anything other than clean, cooking, cleaning and, you know, taking care of the children. It's like, OK, I want to do something. And for a woman who has more drive in her, she has ambition and things like that. It can feel not so great. As opposed to what some women, I know some women are watching this like, oh, my God, that would be my dream life to where I don't have to work and I don't have to do all this. But actually, you don't know what your job does for you to some extent. If you enjoy what you do as work, it's a it's a. It's very fulfilling in a way that you wouldn't understand until you no longer have it. So women who no longer have that opportunity to work, to contribute in that way, and they're not doing anything extra, then they can tend to feel useless. And that is why it's important for 
women who do marry men who are high earning and who don't work, that they have other things that they're involved in. They're involved in community, they're involved in charity, they're, they're involved in other things that makes them feel like they also contribute in this world. They have a purpose, they have value, they have importance as well. Because again, it can usually, all the focus can get shift to the husband and she can just be sitting there feeling like, I feel useless, I feel like I'm not, ma- I'm not doing anything. My husband goes and does all these amazing things and what am I doing? I'm just sat here doing nothing and it's not a good example for my kids, right? So that can be a con to marrying a man who is high earning. So now onto the pros. Of course, number one, you have more disposable income. Now, that can be a pro in a sense of if he's doing his duties and he's providing for your needs, great. But here's another shocker, unfortunately. Not every man who is high earning is a giver. Some men are high earning, but they will count literally every penny. If they give you five pounds to go and buy something, if you don't bring back the exact change, you're going to be in trouble. So let's not assume that a man who is high earning automatically going, means that he's going to be charitable, he's going to be giving, he's going to be want to just give you his money to spend anyhow, Mm-mm. okay? But, you know, you will have more disposable income, meaning that he may buy a bigger house, your children may be in a bigger, better district and go to better schools, they may have their um, tuition fees paid for, things like that. Monetary stuff, you will have more access to. You may have more access to the rich and famous and their lifestyles and things that they do. And if you like that kind of stuff, then, you know, enjoy it. Your husband has it. You're part of it. So enjoy it. So And so that is definitely a pro to marrying someone who is affluent and who is a high earner. And that concludes this video. There's obviously far more pros, but a lot of them are quite obvious. So we'd be here all day if we were to list them all. So I hope this video has been beneficial. I hope it's giving you some food for thoughts because oftentimes, like I've said before, when we think about high earning man, everyone wants a high earning man. It's just like, okay, think about this carefully. It may affect your lifestyle also in some other ways. There's no such thing as a perfect life, guys. This is just the bottom line line of what life is right there's pros and cons to every situation you just choose whatever is more appealing to you right and the side that is not so great it comes with it what can we do life is not perfect right unless you don't want it then you don't choose that lifestyle so i hope this video has served you in some ways if you have enjoyed it or find it beneficial then definitely make sure you give me a thumbs up leave me a comment down below let's discuss more on this topic what you ladies think of what i said here and if men are watch- watching do you agree do you disagree one way or another let me know inshallah i will speak to you guys in my next video video now if you haven't watched this video that i made recently definitely make sure you check it out and i will speak to you over there assalamu alaikum goodbye for now